Hey guys, it's Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter for Sorgatron.com and Basic Sorgonomics talking uh, whatever's on my mind, typically a lot of social media, video production, kind of behind the scenes, some thoughts I have, I'm working out, sometimes I'm just helping myself and hopefully helping you in the process. But anyways, uh, today I really wanted to get into, of course, uh, this past weekend, Wrestle Weekend as we discussed uh, there's a lot of Twitter, so uh, if you're not a big wrestling fan and you're following me, I apologize. I'm not usually spectating so many wrestling shows. I'm usually working behind the scenes in these kinds of cases. But I learned a lot from it, from uh, what some groups are doing, uh, 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 well, not well, etc. And uh, seeing how social media plays in and and everything. So, uh, But one of them I, I wanted to mention, you know, kind of going in, in early. Uh, here's an early shot if you're on video. WWE Live joined us here in Pittsburgh at Console Energy Center. Not a, not a televised show, not a Monday Night Raw, not anything like that. Uh, you know, it, it was just... Their slimmed down show, and it's really cool to see that they actually do have like a set, and the set's actually gotten bigger since last time I've seen one of these. They have a little bit of a video screen, they have a little bit of interactivity, they have the music and the and the videos playing for the guys as they come down. So it's, it's still a pretty good presentation for the live audience and it's really cool that they've kind of invested in that and what surprised me was how much they invested in the interaction online as well because you got to think like uh you know it's it's not it's not like monday night raw where everybody is talking well you know i'm on the mayhem show account trying to get a conversation going and participate as much as i can it's three hours it's so hard and everybody's doing hashtag wwe hashtag raw for instance, and, and and it's not as big of a deal when you have a few thousand people coming in for these shows. Like, Console Arena was not even nearly, the lower bowl was not even half full at this point. Um, my guess is they could have had 5,000 people there, uh, but, but I don't even know from there. But anyways, but they... Like I said, really had a show going, really nice interactive experience. And, and one thing that surprised me was as we were going into it, uh, they had this up on the big screen uh, for those on audio. Uh, they had a triple threat match between uh, the lady wrestlers there. And they had a, a question for Twitter. Uh, should Brie Bella, should the, basically should the valets, should the accompanying people be allowed at ringside? And as you went, you could tweet WWE, hashtag WWE yes, hashtag WWE no at the time. And they actually had a counter, a percentage counter going uh, during this, uh, they checked in at, at, at intermission as well to see how it was going, had the match right after intermission, kind of bring people back. And they also had, of course, you know, uh, getting your picture on, on, I've seen, you know, tweets coming across the uh, banner board over at uh, PNC Park for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, uh, you know, that kind of, same thing with the, the banners. You might have saw the, the ads in the background there. Uh, you'll see tweets pop up during, you know, I think at the time the Pittsburgh Power Games, maybe the Penguins, maybe a game I was at. Uh, so there's that interactivity. But they actually did this, uh, again, at intermission for the most part, I think a little bit before the show too. Uh, they did the tweets and they had, you know, people talk about stuff and they have a hashtag WWE Pittsburgh there's always hashtag WWE and whatever the town is even when it's Monday Night Raw so so kind of you can have a side conversation from the people who were there in the arena versus those watching on TV which can be very different depending on what's going on and what that experience is but you know they had uh, uh, pictures coming up as well, and it was really cool to see. And this this kind of fascinated me too. One, uh, we took a selfie of us. Uh, we had some really cool seats up in the loge seating. It looks like cush chairs, and they bring you food and everything. Uh, we all have to go to the concession stand. Uh, but uh, we had a nice little uh, uh, self photo, and it got on there uh, during intermission. So pretty cool. You know, I got on the big board. I think it's the first time something like that's happened for me. Uh, so you know, marking out a little bit there, but. Then I look back and I'm like, wait, and looking through my photos, I'm like, I didn't take that photo. Where, did, where the heck did they get that picture? And then I'm like, where's this phantom photo that ended up on the big board via Twitter, apparently? What they ended up doing was, I don't even think it was Twitter video. I think I did it. No, it was Twitter video. Now I think about it. Uh, and, you know, I've been playing that a lot. I've been trying to respond to people on Twitter with Twitter video. Uh, I've been just trying to do some behind the scenes stuff like I did here on Monday uh, with Seclair. You know, just 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 utilizing it a little more, kind of figuring out where it fits into things. And they actually took a still from our Twitter video and put that on the board. Very interesting. I don't know if it was the first still they just happened to take. Maybe they're 
Yeah, and I'm trying to think, like, maybe their software isn't processing the Twitter video yet, because I still have things that I can't post Twitter video on, or it doesn't it doesn't show it correctly yet, like when with Hootsuite's are really bad with that, uh, typically catching on to these new ways Twitter is working, ways Facebook are working, and, and having those hooks into that. So, so that was a really interesting aside from that. But also, you know, on top of that, great show, a lot of fun, like I said, uh, how they're using the video, uh, and, and it was more of a live event, and, and then they got the crowd going with certain people popping up and, and making them chant before before uh, people came out. You know, nice, you know, versus back in the day, somebody came out from a corner, there's a spotlight on them, and that's it. You know, it doesn't have all the big lights and everything of Raw, the giant set, anything like that. But it also got me thinking about how uh, uh, events do deal with social media. Uh, it was interesting. I was at AIW's Absolute Intense Wrestling's Absolution uh, 10 up in Cleveland, Ohio on Friday. And, and, and these are always, this is always good, too, because um, uh, Katie actually, uh, Dutter has actually pointed out that, oh, yeah, hey, they're using their Twitter to, to answer questions about the show tonight. Most, mostly was, can we bring beer? So there's that. But uh, it was good because we got in. We were asking questions about handicap cap accessibility and everything and, and had, there was some good interactions there and and they were st- they're very responsive even after the show as uh, I, uh as as we've been complimenting the show profusely because it's, it's i really think one of the best indie shows i've ever seen uh very much so i, I can't think of a feeling uh, that's a whole other conversation uh that's for indie mayhem show tomorrow night uh where we'll have uh, Br- uh, barbie hayden actually on the show you won't know who that is because you're probably not wrestling fans typically watching this show anyways but, you know, that kind of interactivity, make sure stuff's happening, which that kind of attributes to uh, the social media day when the Pittsburgh Marathon people were talking about their command center and making sure they're responsive and helping people out. This is on a much smaller scale. There's only a few hundred people uh, at this event, but still packed house. Really great for for what they're doing there uh, up in AIW. And then kind of moving on to this and, 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 and thinking about, you know, social media day uh, uh, pod camp, we always have a Twitter wall and people are interacting with that and uh, and really thinking about that even with the pod camp coming up and knowing that, you know, I try to make sure I have, you know, pod camp kind of hooked in on my hoot suite so I can see what's going on and try to help that message happen as we go. And it's nice because we don't really need a command center, it seems, at PodCamp Pittsburgh because every one of us organizers are keeping an eye on the hashtag and are trying to respond to that and see what's going on, whether it be parking issues, whether it be uh, rain issues, whether it be you know something else going on or a room change or, or event change or something like that. And thankfully, I think mostly people are uh, new to or in tune to that happening at an event like that. But what do you do at other events? Uh, this whole interactivity thing kind of got me thinking about because we I, I did try to do a little bit you know we we were just at a health conference that a couple of health conferences that I helped with and just making sure they had a presence online so pictures ideas thoughts hashtags got up around those events even though I'm not sure if the audience really would be participating in it too much because of what they were but still to have that out there so other people can find that and. Interactivity just went through the roof when I looked at the stats, and it was really nice for uh, their presence online for that month when they had two conferences within like two weeks of each other. But but thinking how can we engage those people more there? Uh, this this big screen question, for instance, was a really good one. You know, which makes me think next time we have this uh, conference uh, in between, you know, there will be breaks throughout the day to go, you know, stretch your legs. You can't just listen to, a, uh, you know, 45 minute talks straight through all day long, but putting that up there for the, maybe people that aren't like schmoozing as much, you know, be like, Hey, uh, uh, what, what, what are some big ideas you liked from the day? Hashtag boom, boom, boom conference. Right. Uh, so, so think about that as you're, as you're planning events, even smaller events, you know, as we look at these blog fests and evening with pod camp Pittsburgh's and I mean, and I know for us, sometimes we're admired in like getting the event done and we don't step back and say, okay, do, do we have a hashtag for this one you know for instance you know i know we didn't for evening with podcamp but it was streaming and then we really should have had a, a hashtag for that and questions and maybe taking questions online uh you know not that i expect a high 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 engagement for something like that but still like like to have that option kind of available to you but it's all about resources as well so think about that if you are playing something like that what can you do if, if you do if you do have a room a captured room of uh of of, of tens or hundreds or whatever people 
uh, for whatever event you're doing, maybe it's a corporate retreat or something. Uh, what is a question you can put up there? What can you get to kind of engage these guys? You know, um, um, you're at a corporate retreat and, and, and you say, uh, uh, hey, who's the best worker? Okay, man, so that's probably a lame one or something like that. But uh, but still, it's kind of itching that idea and, and wondering what cool stuff you can pull from that. WWE is figuring out, but they've been on the forefront for several, several years uh, for uh, social media in general. We've talked about that uh, with their brands, and I think we're going to be talking about that again here very soon because it's it's very good, and it's a very good message. And I think if you're uh, uh, a brand that has individuals that are each kind of their brand, or if you're into pro wrestling, whether it be a promoter or a pro wrestler it's yourself, you should be looking at WWE and seeing what they're doing and, and, and hacking that and figure out where it fits for you. Indie wrestlers I know that have done that do very well and are growing. And you will see them on TV one day because they get it. Let me know your thoughts on this event, social media. Do you have any events you were at, is the question today, any events that you were at that you think either the social media was done very well or very poorly? And tell me why. Tell me why in the comments, uh, specifically on the YouTube, or let me know just at Sorgatron on the Twitters, hashtag basic sorgonomics when you're doing that, so I know that the question came from this show. I'd like to have a further conversation with you. I want to see how other people are using it. I only attend so many events, guys. Uh, so only good to, see, good to see so many uh, examples of this. And most of the time, it's great social media people to begin with, so I don't have a lot of bad examples of it. So let me know what you think. We'll see you guys. Uh, we'll see you guys as people are talking about Monday Night Raw in my periscopes. Keep an eye on at Sorgatron on the Twitters because I do periscope this every once in a while uh, when I am live to do it. So we'll see you. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.